What should I do with my life? That might be the question that you might be asking. It's a very important question to ask. But don't ask me. You should ask yourself because uh, oftentimes you know already what you like to do and what you should do. You should continue to do what you love to do and you need to focus more on what you can do instead of dwelling too much on the things you cannot do, on the things that you wish you could do, on the kind of person that you aren't. You need to you need to get away from that, get away from the jealousy of thinking about the things that you don't have, about the things that you can't do, because, because that's not good, because you're focused on a place, a reality, a realm that does not exist exactly, and never mind whether or not it could hypothetically exist, you need to realize that who you are in the moment is very important and helps you and it cultivates you it helps make you into a better person and and that is very important and I know that in my own life personally speaking who I am now is deeply rooted on the kind of person that I've always been I've been the kind of person that's asked a lot of questions I would spend time with people and uh, I really care about people, especially younger people, because younger people will grow up to be older people who will help transform tomorrow's generation, and that is very important. And because because if we don't have the people that will be the leaders of tomorrow, then tomorrow will be a place full of chaos, of disaster, of uh, disappointment, because we won't have leaders that can cultivate those kinds of things and be able to bring us change that will last, you know, be able to do the things that we really want in our society, in our world, and it's so important to do those kinds of things. So what do you need to do? And, and who should you be in your life? You should be who you already are, unless if you're not the right person, which is still possible, but for the most part, you probably have a bit of who you really are deep inside you even if you're not being who you really should be at the moment you know who you really are because who you are is the kind of person that you were when you first started your life the first few years of your life probably the first five or ten years of your life you were somebody and you were an artist and you're special but as you got older you got through some sad parts in your life the really disappointing lives and when you experience certain things like disappointment and pain and all these other things, you begin to doubt the kind of person that you are. And you begin to think that maybe you can't be an artist and a dreamer and, and a leader and all these certain kind of things that you can do, but you don't know if you can do anymore because you're doubting it based on the different situations that have happened in your life and you... You kind of say, well, I can't do it because of, of this and that and all these other things. And that means I can never, ever do it. But that not, that's not necessarily true. You look at some of these lives of, of certain famous people, you will see that they failed many times, but they keep on trying. One example is Abraham Lincoln. He failed many times, but he kept on trying. You have other people like Einstein and the guy that invented the, the light bulb. And the other people that don't get credit for inventing the light bulb because they did something else. But um, you got the Wright brothers and you have all these uh, famous people. You have Michael Jordan who is the best basketball player in the world in some ways. At least a lot of people say that. And yet he doesn't make every basket and he doesn't win every game back when he was playing. And yet, you know, he comes out on top because he kept on kept on trying and he keeps on trying he kept on trying and he keeps on trying in the other things that he does because he's he's a good businessman and, and that's the kind of thing that we can do in our lives we need to focus on the things that we can do and and focus on the people that that can help us get there and so for me I know it's kind of hard as an English teacher I never really thought I would be an English teacher when I was younger I, I wanted to be like a Michael Jackson and help people back when I was eight years old in America, um, back in 1993 when I was eight years old. I was born in America in 1985 and really wanted to be Michael Jackson. And I also like liked Michael Jordan. I wanted to be, you know, tall, black, and in the NBA. And I wanted to, you know, do all these things. And um, I, I started making videos when I was 10 in 95. And, and 
I'm a man of many hobbies, almost like a jack of all trades, and I try to do many things, and I always stay busy, and I have a hard time sleeping, and sometimes a little bossy. I might be a little bossy. I try to control people. I might be like a clean freak, and and, and I keep on trying, and I keep on trying, and I never want to quit, and, uh, and I always want to make money, and that's what we care about in the world. We want to make a lot of money in the world, and, and uh, especially in high school, I thought about making video games. I thought maybe they would make a lot of money, but then I was also involved in different clubs. I was homeschooled, and then I went to public high school, and I was 15, and, and I was involved in uh, like a homeschooling club in Awanas and Word of Life. And with Word of Life, they have uh, some Bible schools, and I decided to go study the Bible, and, and that helped me. Even though at the time when I was in high school, I was thinking, you know, I already know the Bible. I've been studying the Bible all my life, and some people, you don't believe in God, but, you know, I believe in Him, but at the same time, I thought I already knew what the Bible says, but it was really important that, that I went to study the Bible, because if I didn't take the time to study the Bible then, then I probably wouldn't ever, wouldn't ever do it in anymore, you know, ever again, you know, in the future, because I'd be too busy with, like, a, a career or getting married and doing other things, and so I made the right decision, even though I thought that maybe I shouldn't make the right decisions, because how can I make a lot of movie, money? How can I make a lot of money? Or make a lot of movies? Man, if I had studied the Bible, but I ended up deciding to study the Bible, and that was one of the best decisions I made in my life. Another good decision that I made is, like, uh, staying single and waiting for true love, which hasn't, hasn't happened yet because I was born in 1985 and now in 2014 I'm single and I'm 29 years old, F.A. forever alone, but nevertheless I will continue to try my best to go after what is best in the world. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh man, it's, it's hard to explain. It, either you believe in what I'm saying, you know what I'm talking about, or you think I'm crazy, pretty much. And there, there might be some gray area area, you know, like where you're not sure, you're in the middle, you're in the fence line, you're, yeah, you have some wiggly room and you're undecided, like undecided votes, but, but I doubt it, but, but I'm just saying, trying to say like, um, like I had all these dreams growing up, but then as I got older and uh, like, maybe I stopped believing in all the different things that, that I can do, but in, you know, there's still a part of me that's like, has an inner child in me, an inner kid, you know, I'm still a kid at heart, you know, and I, I still got it deep inside of me, but, but it kind of goes away, you know, the artist, the inner artist, the, the inner you kind of dies away over the years as you get older, you stop believing, and even me as one of the biggest dreams in the world, first in La La Land all the time, in the land of make-believe, the Never Ever Land, uh, with Mr. Roger Neighborhood, and even I can fall from that wagon, from that horse, and, and I could become more of a normal person, and as I get older, I do, and as I get older, I become less shy and more open and energetic, too, but, you know, like, I have to be reminded that, that, that I could still do things. I ended up going to Vietnam to teach English in 2012, when I was about 27 years old, and, and that was a really good decision, but I wasn't really sure if it would be a good decision, and I thought about it a few times, like, a few years ago, I thought about teaching English uh, around like uh, 2009 and yet uh, a good friend of mine, Lincoln Hawk, he said, you know, what if you go there and you get stranded? And so I thought maybe it wouldn't be a good idea because if I go to Vietnam and people don't like me and then I get stuck in Vietnam. And yet a couple of years later, embarrassed. But I don't really know exactly what, what happened to with the, that blonde girl, but I know for me, I have to focus. And uh, so I came to Vietnam in 2012 and and I, I was stuck in Vietnam because the people that hired me fired me within five days and they said that I'm just a tutor and I'm not good at English and they used Google Translate to tell me that and then I was like, oh brother, what am I supposed to do, man? I'm stuck in Vietnam and then, and yet a restaurant took me in and let me work there for free and I was teaching English there um, to people, to customers and um, in Bac Ninh, near Hanoi. And, um, the, Hanoi is the capital of Vietnam, it's in the north and it's near China and it's also near some mountains and there's a place called Sapa, it's like the only, only place with snow in Vietnam. And, and, and so in like December 2012 I was working and, and teaching English for free like at this uh, Papa Foods restaurant and, and I was meeting people and I guess the north of Vietnam is a little different. The people are different up there than the, the south. And, and um, my mother told me, and some people told me, don't go to the north of Vietnam because they might want to kill you because of, you know, that war. The American War, which I called the Vietnamese Civil War. And um, it's pretty devastating. Except, you know, I didn't die and I survived it. 
in 2012 and, and in January 2013 and then I went to Hanoi and I was teaching English to some people and, and, I, and then I went to a museum in the Wabin province and then uh, Tengwa, Tengwa province and then it was the 10th of February 2013 and it was the Lunar New Year that they celebrate uh, in Vietnam and other countries too, like China, oh man. And, uh, and I went to Saigon. I went to Saigon on that day, on the 10th of February. It was a Sunday. It was a day before my birthday, before my, before my 28th birthday. And, and uh, so people were helping me. Like everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people were telling me to come to Saigon and, um, because there's like more people that want to learn English than Hanoi. And, and I would find work. And so I came to Saigon in February 2013. And, and uh, some people were helping me. And I was able to find um, some work, and I worked at the Tan Fan Foreign Language School, and they're in the Gulf of District, and they would send me, they would send me to different schools, uh, like the, uh, like it's kindergarten schools, preschools, sometimes even like um, elementary, like primary schools, and maybe, maybe high schools too, but mostly um, children all the way up to about 12 years old, and and I worked for all these different schools. They would send me to different schools in different districts in Saigon, in Mars. Till about June or July 2013, and I, I signed a I signed a six month contract with them. They only gave me about four months or a little less than that actually, and so they kind of broke my contract. They broke my contract, and then that's uh, really bad. And I was really upset with that. But that's kind of what happened. And then I started also working at another school, to, uh, a New Star English Center. It, was, it has the same name as the other school that I was working. At when I first came to Vietnam and back then, and but this is another one in Saigon in the Tofu District, and I was working there for a few months too. So I worked at the Tan Fan School for about four months, and for the New Star in, in the Tofu District for about four or five months um, until about July. And I was also like finding other students too, and I was teaching English at like cafes and houses all over, and meeting people and meeting good people. And I also started working at the uh, FYD Fellowship Youth Group, and. Um, they're a Christian organization. You should contract them. Uh, they're pretty good and they're fluent. The founders are fluent in English and Vietnamese and uh, they're really good people and they're, they're Christians and I recommend you going to see FYD Fellowship Youth Group. And at the moment, we're, we have our English club, an English speaking club with the FYD at a cafe in District 4 on Monday and Fridays, 8 to 10 p.m. And so you're invited. And I have other clubs that I started too. And um, it's, it's really interesting and uh, with all the different things that's been happening with me, um, living in different districts in, in Saigon for over the past year, and because now it's, uh, it's almost June. It's almost June in 2014 now. Um, it's, it's May. It's the 22nd of May. It's a Thursday night right now, about 9 p.m. And uh, I'm in one of my rooms. It's, this is in the Tungpu district. No, it's in the Tung Bin district. Oh, let's see. It's close to District 11 in, Tung, in the Tungpu district. And I also sleep in the, in the Todak district too. And, and that's kind of good. And I don't pay any money because I don't make a lot of money sometimes. And Because a lot of times I teach English and then people don't want to give me money. And that, that, that's kind of hard, but then I want to help them. And if I help them, that's good. But then I don't know. I don't know what I should say about that because maybe I should make everybody pay, make, make everybody pay a little bit of money, but maybe what if they don't have a lot of money and then I really want to help them so I need to figure out exactly what to do but then again I'm not exactly dying and so financially speaking I think I'm kind of okay but I'm thinking far ahead and I want to make sure that I can do everything that I need to do. For example, I want to pay back a student loan that I took out when I was in school. I went to four different colleges um, after high school. I graduated high school in Forest Grove, Oregon, of the USA, in 2004, 2004, and um, and then I went to a, a Word of Life Bible Institute, and then I went to an Appalachian Bible College for just one year. So I graduated from the Word of Life Bible Institute, just a two-year college, and I got the diploma and certificate into the Bible, and uh, then I went to the ABC Appalachian Bible College, and but then. Like, I was getting bad grades, and I was distracted because I was thinking about the future, and I was spending a lot of time looking for more financial aid, and I lost the financial aid that I already had, and I took out a student loan of about $3,500, which is $70 million B&D, and um, that's, the, that's the loan that I'm still trying to pay back, and I'm still paying some of that back, but I, I really want to pay it back, and so I've been saving money now, and I've been trying to save it back, and, and sometimes people don't really understand the, like the definition of how to save money and they think maybe it's silly but I don't think it really is silly and it's very important uh, to, to have a balanced life and to try to 
pay back the debts when you owe money to somebody. And it's very important to uh, communicate. And it's very important to do what you say. If you say you're going to do something, do it. And I kind of run, run into problems and in, in a lot of problems in my life, especially in Vietnam for the past almost two years now. Uh, 18 months. Muy uh, 18 months. And... Uh, and it, it's um, devastating, but, you know, I learn how to deal with it, and I, I pray to God because I, I believe that, that Christ can help me. Even if that sounds crazy, I, I believe in it so much that you can't really say to my mind, even though I say that I'm open-minded. It's like almost like I'm closed-minded, and it's really hard, like, um, all the different things, like, um, um, like, I, I bought three different bikes in Vietnam in 2013, and uh, actually only two in 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 2013, and, and uh, the first one I bought was an like, electric bicycle, and this uh, girl stole it. Uh, she sold it to some friends that really needed it for, the, for their daughters, and, and she talked to me about it, and, but I never really made a decision, but then she gave it away, and, uh, and I was really upset about that, and that was about um, almost $200, or around that much, uh, $200, 4 million VND, and, uh, and then I had another one, and that was stolen in District 1, and it was parked at this, um, this uh, hostel, that I used to stay out, and that I used to stay at, and, you know, in April, and, and it was really sad when I when I lost my bike, and my second bike even, and that was like about two million VND, that's uh, one hundred dollars, and, uh, and that was really sad because I thought uh, some other people were, were watching it, and then and then I then I bought a third bike, oh okay, so I thought I bought a third bike, and it was a mountain bike, and it was four million or almost four million VND. And uh, that's two hundred dollars, and and then that was stolen at the twenty three nine park in District One of Saigon, and and that was stolen around uh, December two thousand thirteen, and I saw it happen, and I, I tried to call the um, like try to tell the the security officers or maybe even the police and other people, and they saw it happen, and they, they kind of said that they were going to look for it, but they don't really know a lot of English, and they try to help me try to find the burglar, and I saw the burglar get on the bike, and it's like the burglar, the burglar, the bad person, talked to the, the, to, to the security officer, and then I hopped on my bike and went, and I, like, I think that's what happened, and it happened so, so fast, and I was only like um, a few feet away, and, but then I couldn't run away, because it was like, he went across a busy, uh, street and um, and I was hoping that somebody would help me but then we never really found it and then I was walking around and from then on you know when I teach English in different districts I would walk from district 1 to the Gulf district like around 15 kilometers um, and then all the way back in one day like 30 kilometers like I would spend hours and hours walking around from uh, December 2013 until around March 2014 and it was, it was a bizarre adventure, but it's something that I wouldn't really take back. And people always say, you're crazy, and you should take, you should take the bus. And, and yet I say, um, I don't think so. Um, I think that it's very important to save money. And sometimes I would, like, um, skip meals, and I wouldn't eat. And, and because, you know, I really want to save money, and people look at me, and they think, like, maybe I'm crazy, and I, but I'm losing my mind. But I think it's very important. And, um, like... It, it's really, really, I don't know, kind of strange because you teach English, but then um, sometimes people don't understand you and they don't respect you and they think that you're not important. They Maybe they don't really need to learn English or that they can learn English by themselves or with a Vietnamese English teacher, which might be true, kind of, but not, not totally because it's better if you learn from me or from, you know, somebody else who's like a foreigner and also really good at English, you know what I'm saying, and uh for more information, you can email me. <laughs> if you don't already know, my email is my name and your country, if your country is Vietnam, joeyarnoldvn at gmail.com. And, you know, I always try to help people, even for free, but, you know, I like money, so the more the more the money, the more the merrier, the better. You know, the more the better. So if you give me money, that's great, and I'll take as much money as you give me, but especially if you're not happy. If you don't like me, then give me less money as a teacher, and if you like me, then give me more money. I, if you really don't like me, then um, maybe I can teach English for free, uh, but then maybe if somebody else offers me money, then I have to go where the money goes. I have to go with the highest offer, you know, and uh, obviously that's kind of what people do, and uh, obviously I do that too, and it's like, oh man, but um, tell me something new, and I, but I can't really tell you anything new because I've told people this many, many times, but um, it's very important, and 
and like I have all these like students, I meet people all the time, and so people ask me, do you have a lot of friends? Maybe I try to be friends with people, but I don't know if they're actually friends to me back, and I don't, I don't really know if they, if they really are my friends back to me. But I'm friendly to people, and I try to be friends with as many people as I can in a good kind of way, not in a bad kind of way. I know I need to have some good friends too, some good best friends too, BFF, best friends forever kind of thing. Uh, and I'm FA forever alone. Why well, I don't know, but and actually I kind of know. But hey, that's another another thing that I already made a video for. <laughs> but um, like you know, like I have students and I teach English, but then I always like tend to lose students because they say, oh, you're not good at English and you're stupid and you're retarded or uh, we don't want to learn or we don't have a lot of money so we can't give you money. And then I I still try to help people, but like sometimes I meet people and then like I meet them one time or two times or three times, like once a week or once a day or a few times and then after a while like I never see them again and like sometimes they make promises like they say something like oh we promise to give you money later or we promise like if you tease us for a few months then we'll give you money at the end of um, one week or one month or two months or or something like that and I, I one girl and she said that and, and and I taught English to her a few times and and then she went to Hanoi she went from Saigon to Hanoi and and I think, and, and now I don't know what happened to her. And, and all these kind of crazy things happen, and I kind of have to roll my eyes, and I have to uh, go with the punches, I have to dodge the punches, and like the, I have to continue to, you know, go no matter what, even if people treat me badly. But at the same time, I want to be like the judge. I want to, you know, I want to seek revenge against people who do me wrong. If they do something bad, if they lie to me or something, I want to seek justice kind of thing, uh, revenge and justice and kind of, those kinds of things. Except, you know, I believe that God tells me and he tells Christians, you know, Jesus Christ, he says, but you need to emphasize on grace and mercy. And I think I need to do that more. And except, except I don't really do that. And, and I, I'm more on the other side because, you know, God is the Trinity. We believe in one God just like the the Muslim people and other religions too, they may say, we believe in one God. And they may say, oh, well, Christians, they believe in three gods, but we believe in one God um, in three persons. It's like uh, three parts. Now, you see three, but it's really one. It's one God, but it's, it's the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And and God the Father, He is the man who focuses on justice. If you do something bad, He will He will punish you. And he will bring justice. And justice is a very important concept to understand. But that's his job and not our jobs. And yet, except one of the biggest mistakes that I make is I try to focus too much on, on his job. When really, he wants me to do the job of Jesus. To be like Jesus was to, is to emphasize on the Holy Spirit's capabilities of what the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost can do, which is... Um, move people, motivate people, inspire people to do what they can do with what they got in the good things, to focus on the positivity of the good things without being too new AC. But, um, and that's what I need to do, and it's very important to do that. Yes, except I don't really do that, and I really need to do that. And let it go, let it go. Na 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 You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's very important, very important to be simple, and complex, except don't be complex. It's very bad to be complex, except maybe there are some justifications and excuses and reasons to be complex, except for the most part, not really. And I need to be nicer to people. I, and I pray, and I need to be nicer to people. And, and this is something that you can learn if you have the same problems that I have. You can learn to kind of be nicer to people. If people made mistakes, let it go kind of thing, even though you, know, you want to teach them a lesson. It, if they act like a thief in the night and steal the girl I really liked it. Since I was eight years old back in 1993 in America, because I was born in America and I'm a, I am an American English teacher, truly born in America, born in America, uh, about 6 a.m. on a Monday uh, on the 11th of February 1985. And, and, and I am passionate and I believe that I could become uh, very capable of doing a lot of different things, but. Uh, a lot of crazy things happen, and sometimes people don't believe me um, in, in what I can do and in everything that I'm capable of doing. And and, and I need to like uh, I need to shred them out of my life, kind of thing. I need to focus on the here and the now to some extent. I need to you know do some things that will help me. You know I need to have dreams, and I need to um, you know think.
think about the future, but not think about the future too much. And I, I need to think about the past and learn from the mistakes of the past, mistakes that I made and mistakes that other people have made. And, and not forget it, because if I forget the mistakes, then I'll make the mistakes again. I will, definitely. History repeats some stuff. History repeats itself for those who don't study history, and, and that's proven. And, 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 and yet, you know, you got the past and the, and the present and the future, and you need to focus on the, on, on, on the present, because that's why it's a gift. That's why it's so special, because it's a present. It's a gift, because it's the present. It's right now in the moment you got to focus on that. And it's one of the things that will help you in, in making the right decisions. You need to treasure some moments while you still can, like I should have with Tiffany Combo, girl that I really liked since I was five years old, and I drew pictures of me and her getting married in 93 when I was eight years old, but she had other boyfriends, and that's one of the reasons why I'm single, because I like girls like her, and I say, I like you, and they say, oh, that's great, but I already have a boyfriend, or I already have a husband, and it drives me insane, and then Tiffany, she died, and I could have said goodbye to her, and I didn't treasure the moment, I kind of said goodbye to her, and I kind of felt like, I kind of knew, I, predict, I kind of predicted the future that, that I would have to say goodbye to her, and, and I should have said goodbye to her, and I didn't, and it was like, I regret it, and so we don't want to regret those moments, so do what you can to try to stay in the moment, and try to do what you can, try to do what you can, and focus on who you are, what you can do, do what you love, and, and write it down, write a list of things you like, things you don't like, things you are good at, things you don't do very well, you know, things you're not good at, you know, but really, really try to you know, you gotta write it down because if you don't write it down, you're gonna forget. Even people who are fluent in English have to write things down. Me, I write things down because I'm gonna forget. I don't know what I'm gonna forget. When you're learning English, you gotta practice the four skills at the same time. If you really wanna get better in English, you gotta practice the four skills at the same time. Watch some uh, YouTube videos, uh, any kind of videos that you really, really like. Watch some videos, some things that you really, really like. And, and read the subtitles at the same time. And then try to say what they say. Try to imitate it as much as you can. And try to write it down too. Try to practice those four skills at the same time. It's very important. And, and it will help you. And then ask a lot of questions like I do. Be very intuitive and ask questions. And, because the questions are going to help you remember things and remember new words and, and uh, even phrasal verbs and, and new you know ideas and things when you're learning uh, anything especially different you know foreign languages is very important when you're learning English team and English you, when you're learning you gotta find connections and, and learning needs to be fun and so you need to do things that are fun to help you learn English like um, singing and games and all these different games and and all these different things and, and ideas, you know, the things in your head. Maybe something sounds like a Vietnamese word or another language, you know, when you're learning English. And it sounds like your your native mother tongue. And, and you got to play tricks in your game, in your head. You got you to gotta play tricks in your head to help you remember things. You got to make as many connections, as many highways and roads to help you remember how to get there. Um, because you never know when you're going to have a block, when there's going to be like a, a detour in, in um in your head, like like the national world, in the highways, you know, things fall apart and you forget things because you don't have enough connections. So ask questions, make connections, play games, make learning fun, you know, speak and listen and learn and love and fight and do all the things you, you gotta do and, and write a list. I, I'm gonna tell you this again. Write a list of the things that you love, things that you hate. Try to focus on the things you love, things that you can do and not just on the things you want to do, but also the things that you already know how to do. And, and, and don't focus so much on what people want you to do, on the things that people think you're not good at. If they say like they say to me, you're not good at singing, I, I could be like, oh no, but I need to focus on what do I think. I mean, what they think is important, but what you think can be sometimes. What you think can be more important, and that's very important to remember. And so don't forget about that. Don't forget about that. Don't forget who you are. Who you are based on who you were when you were younger. Because that is your potential, your true potential and your capability. And focus on that. Focus on your drive. You can do things. You can go great. You can become the last samurai. You can be the last samurai. Bum, bum, ba, dum, bum, bum. Last samurai. You can be the last samurai.